Hey everyone, how you doing? Into Weapons back again with you. Wanted to put together a quick video here on the overall updates and costs and everything that went into this Vepper rifle build that I just uh, completed. Uh, I know a lot of you have been watching the individual upgrades as I've been going along. I believe there's 14 videos in the series that I did. Uh, but I really just wanted to throw one video out there in case, you know, that's a newcomer and they really don't want to sit through all 14 upgrade videos. They can just kind of come to this video and get an overall of what happened to this rifle. Uh, as many of you know, this is the Vepper Rifle 7.62x54R caliber. Uh, it is the 16 and a half inch barrel variant, so it's got the short barrel on it. Uh, it is made in, in, in Russia by the Malat factory. Uh, the Vepper rifle normally comes imported into the country as a hunting configuration, so it's got a thumb hole stock, wood thumb hole stock, and a wood forend. What I'll do is I'll, uh, maybe right now at this time would be a good time, I'll, I'll patch in a before picture and an after picture so you can kind of see the side-by-side -side comparisons as to uh, the original configuration and how it looks now. Uh, so I'll throw that in here shortly. And uh, what we'll do at this point is, like I said, kind of go through real quickly all the upgrade, upgrades that I've done to this rifle to turn it into what you see it as now. Uh, I purchased this Vepper rifle uh, from CenterfireSystems.com. I purchased it uh, right in the beginning of April, and it took me now, so it's about, actually just about a month now to complete this build with all the customizations that I've done. Uh, the original purchase price, which included the tax, the shipping, and the FFL uh, background check that my FFL dealer had to do, was a total of about uh, $1,290. So, uh, a little bit under $1,300 for the rifle itself, which is quite a bit more expensive than what Vepers were going for in uh, early 2011 up to mid-2011, uh, when they be started becoming rare in the market conditions because of the political aspects of things, really drove up the prices. So, uh, I did pay quite a bit of a premium for the rifle itself, but uh, in my opinion, it was is pretty, pretty worth it considering that you can buy a PSL for you know around a thousand dollars, eleven hundred dollars, and uh, the the uh, Vepper rifle here is um, superior in every way uh, to the PSL rifle. Uh, with the upgrades that I have into it, and I believe there are fourteen uh, upgrades altogether, it came to a total of. Uh, $1,077, so a little under $1,100 total for the uh, upgrade cost of this rifle, which brought the total build cost to about uh, $2,365, so $2,365. So it is a, a pretty expensive build that I got going on here, but uh, well worth it for a DMR, or Designated mar Marksman's right t Rifle type uh, system that I got set up here. So we'll kind of go through here and I'll show you what I, what I got on here guys. We'll start on the back of the rifle and kind of work our way forward. In the very, very back we have the uh, enhanced Magpul rubber butt pad that I, that I put on the Magpul CTR um, stock. These are both uh, pretty well known uh, products from Magpul. On top of that I have the .25 Magpul cheek riser. I, I might actually update that to the .50 uh, just to give it a little bit more lift and a little bit easier eye relief with the um, UTG up scope up here that I have. Uh, on the um, for the, the the stock here, what I have it sitting on is a Bone Steel Arms folding left hand folder um, tube, and I'll kind of show you how that works. And I'll get some pressure downward on it, and then it uh, it folds to the left. And I'll show you guys. Ooh showed you guys that it kind of does seat pretty well there even with the Midwest Industries uh, scope, mail, uh, scope rail mount on there. Uh, it doesn't uh, sit fully positioned but it does sit enough where it will stay there and uh, it won't lock but it'll stay there which is nice. Uh, so moving forward the bone steel arms was pretty nice that's a folder. Uh, I have the Scorpion ATI Scorpion recoil pistol grip on here that worked out pretty well. Uh, matches the, the look of the rifle really well. It's got a nice ergonomic feel to it. Uh, on the internals here, you really can't see. I got a Dinzeg Arms uh, Tapco G2 modified fire control group. Uh, and Dinzeg Arms did an excellent job on that. Uh, it really makes a nice, clean, crisp trigger pull. I have the um, Mark, uh, Mike Krebs um, uh, Enhanced Safety Selector. It's got the bolt hold open feature. 
and a couple additional areas on the safety selector itself to allow you to uh, use the safety selector with just one finger. Still a bit tight, but it, uh, it definitely functions well and it holds the bolt open really well. I'll show you that in fact. I can write it up here and show you. So that works out pretty well. Let that go forward. Um, sitting here I have the Midwest Industries um, scope mount here. It works pretty well. That's a pretty standard scope mount. It's got pretty good reviews. Sitting on top of that I have the UTG uh, 3 to 12 time magnification uh, AccuShot. I think it's the Easy Tap SWAT version here. It works pretty well. Uh, it's got the 12 time magnification. 36 reticle color that you can change it to which is kind of sweet. Illuminated reticle. Um, overall pretty nice scope. Haven't used it yet so I can't really give a um, a real detailed impression of it. Uh, moving along here we have the SGM Tactical 10 round Vepper magazine. Uh, these come from SGM themselves and I think I purchased mine through Carolina Shooter Supply but a bunch of distributors have those in stock right now. Uh, moving along from there we have the Magpul L5 which is the 5 inch rail which I inserted on this CSS aluminum forend along with the Magpul angled foregrip those both work pretty well. I did have to open up the holes on the bottom of the CSS which is the Carolina Shooter Supply aluminum vented forend gives it more of an AR-15 look. Had to open up the holes in order to put that on uh, but that uh, is a real nice looking and works real well. I have a Harris bipod. This is the SBRM version or model. Uh, it's got a little bit of a tilt feature there. It goes from 6 inches to 9 inches. Uh, overall it looks like it's going to be pretty good. I did have to add another uh, mounting band on here, barrel mounting band, which CSS was kind enough to send me in order to move this a little bit forward in order to give me proper clearance for this angle for, uh, foregrip. If you're kind of doing the same conversion on your rifle, I uh, highly recommend jumping out to my channel and just kind of watching those two videos and see how I did that. It's pretty easy, but you do need to do a little bit of drilling. Uh, and on the very top, uh, very front of the rifle here, we have a Tapco G2, or I'm sorry, Tapco slotted AK muzzle brake. Uh, it works pretty well on uh, reducing recoil and muzzle flip, or muzzle climb I should say, as well as uh, it doesn't do anything for the muzzle flash. So that, that's one thing that was important to me was that I maintained my, my muzzle flash. I, I like the big muzzle flashes. So um, I think that's pretty much it guys. It's pretty much uh, the whole rifle in its entirety and all the upgrades that I've done to it. I can't think of anything else. Uh, but overall, it was a really fun build. I'm anxious to get it out to the uh, range, which will be the next video that you guys will see on this rifle. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely put some uh, rounds down range at a 50 yards, at 100 yards, and see what kind of groupings we get. Uh, make sure everything's functioning correctly. And we'll also do a couple mag dumps with this uh, SGM 10 round um, magazine here. We'll just kind of throw a couple down there, rapid fire, and see what kind of muzzle flash we can get and uh, what kind of uh, fun we can have with it. And that's pretty much it, guys. It was a fun build. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If you're interested in any of the upgrades that I've done to this rifle, jump out to my channel and check out the individual uh, videos that I have out there on that. Otherwise, uh, I appreciate you guys uh, giving me the support you have on this build. And if, uh, like I said, you have any questions, let me know. And until next time, take it easy.